moving is the best superhero series on TV, according to Rolling Stone. The Daily Beast wrote you should watch the TV show Moving, despite the fatigue of the superhero genre in movies and series. Why? Although the show is based on a webtoon, the webtoon is not as amazing to be so powerful as a TV show. The show has famous actors and a good director, but I think the main reason lies elsewhere. I believe the shows stand on the shoulders of giants. Watching Moving, I was constantly reminded of other great works I saw, especially comics from the 70s and 80s. I also remembered that the Asian business model is usually not about disruption but improving what existed before. So, innovation in Asia is usually achieved by continuously improving through small changes, instead of making a big change or a complete breakthrough. I think moving is a great example of that business perspective. So, my review will be heavily based on comics and some other artistic works from before. Moving seems to understand the culture of comics, and it was probably influenced by many of the best works in the industry. Moving is also a great opportunity to learn about storytelling in marketing and arts. Structurally, moving reminds me of games like Persona 5. Both Moving and Persona 5 tell the story of a group of students who develop superpowers. They are not good at using those powers, but they use them to fight against the injustice they see in the world. Also, despite having superpowers, most of their lives are focused on living normally. For example, going to school, making friends, interacting with their parents, and enjoying the small pleasures they gave. However, that's only the younger generation of superheroes or supervillains. Moving also shows that someone is killing the heroes from the past, superpowered people who are now retired and live as common individuals in society. This is essentially the same premise of Watchmen, one of the best superhero comics in history. That makes us ask the same question seen in Watchmen, who watches the Watchmen? Then. Moving and Persona are also about how much we can trust the adults in power. That includes people in education, entertainment, and politics, for example. Moving is not as dark or deep as Watchmen and Persona are, but it's great entertainment with more substance than usual. The TV show makes me think of comics that made us think about the issues of the real world. What would happen in the real world if superheroes existed? In comics, Green Arrow and Green Lantern are a great example of that. For example, when Green Lantern was unable to explain why he didn't use his powers to fight against racism. Astro City is a great example of that too. Moving is very similar in that regard. The TV show is about the human side of the superheroes and not their powers. In comics, many moments are important because we understand the characters, their morals, and their values. For example, when Spider-Man revealed his secret identity to a fan, that showed the moral values of Peter Park, not the powers of Spider-Man. The kid who collects Spider-Man is still one of the best stories comics ever showed us. Understanding the lessons Superman learned from his uncle also helps us appreciate the character and his actions. Moving digs deeper into the dilemma of not using their powers when they can because they need to protect their identities or have some other important reasons. Sometimes, it's hard to know if those powers are good or bad for them, as the responsibility of having powers can be very heavy, especially for young people. We know the dreams and the struggles that heroes face outside combat. Facing the consequences of being a superhero is not easy on one's morals and ethics. Human Torch is often known as a light and humorous character. However, Human Torch decided to retire after one of his fans tried to flame on as his hero did but died because of the burns caused by that. In comics, we see how the relations developed. Combats are much more meaningful because of that. For example, when Spider-Man fought to rescue Gwen Stacy, we knew her relationship with Peter Park very well. We knew how they met, we learned to admire Gwen Stacy, and we rooted for them when they started dating. So, when Spider-Man fights to rescue Gwen Stacy, 
readers were also rooting for his success. And, when Spider-Man failed and accidentally killed Gwen Stacy during the combat, readers were also devastated. The X-Men are among the most important examples of comics about friendship. Wolverine and Colossus didn't get along initially because of the differences between their philosophies. Colossus didn't trust Wolverine and felt betrayed by him. So, when Wolverine and Colossus are finally together in battle, combining their strengths to attack with a fastball special, that means more than an attack. It means that now they trust each other, it means that Wolverine and Colossus became friends despite their differences. During the Dark Phoenix saga, when the comic says that Scott Summers and Jean Grey were young, were in love and were heroes, we believed that. Because we had seen the relationship between Scott and Jean developing since the time she arrived at school. Jean's decision to dress as a Marvel girl again was a powerful and emotional reminder of her growth for a long time, starting long before the Dark Phoenix saga. So, the TV show spends a lot of time developing the characters and their relationships, which are more important than the fights. Especially in the beginning, moving is almost like a slice of life story, something like Comey can't communicate, for example. The story seems almost mundane, with classes, exams, classmates, having fun or eating together. The characters of moving may have superpowers, but they are humans first. We don't know which characters have power. We also don't know if those powers are good, or how strong they are. If you are a bad person, having powers will not make you a good person. If you are a good person, it doesn't mean you will have superpowers. Powers can be great, bad, or something hard to know. That perspective reminds me of Wild Cards, the superhero book series led by George R. R. Martin, but which includes other big writers like Roger Zelazny. The TV show is slow, and it takes time to know the characters until the young and old generations come together. Again, Comics are a great example of how exciting we can be when we see two generations of superheroes working together. Finally, having a corridor fight scene inspired by Old Boy is now expected, and there is one in Moving 2. And it was funny to see that one of the main characters is a kid dressed in yellow. Moving is certainly a great TV show, often reminding me of many of the most important comics that I know and even games like Persona 5 and anime like Komi can't communicate. You don't need to know those works to appreciate the TV show. But I think it helped me to understand the level of quality of this show. The show is a good reminder for marketers about the power of storytelling and emotion, but also some of the issues. The show is not perfect. I don't like how smart characters may become stupid to make the story tense, but moving is far from the only one doing that sometimes. I'm waiting for a second season. And I would certainly watch a TV show about some of the characters, like the mom. There are many characters, but mom, dad, son, and daughter are the big heroes. Not because of their powers, but because they are great people. This by itself makes me recommend the show.